Good morning, everybody. It's Robin Green, owner and founder of Movies for Mommies. Welcome back to our segmented series called Ask Emma with Emma Fogel, registered social worker here in Ontario, um, but taking questions from all across Canada. And good morning, Emma. We have some great uh, questions for you this morning. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm happy to be back. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming to visit. So we're gonna jump right in here. Um, we're talking about uh, some of the challenges during COVID that moms are dealing with as moms, as parents. Um, and one of the things that uh, you and I have been talking with off camera about was really a very helpful acronym for facing COVID and dealing with these challenging times. What can you, what can you uh, tell us more about that, Emma? So there has been a widespread acronym that was developed at the beginning of COVID by several mental health professionals, and it's called FACE COVID. And I've been using it with so many of my clients because it's a really organized, wonderful way that we can sort of focus on what is most important or how we can cope with our difficult emotions. So FACE COVID starts with F as in focus on what's in your control, right? Oftentimes when we're all at home with babies, other children, partners, everybody, it's very difficult to feel a sense of control, right? So what you can control are certain things, meal times, doing your best to stick to sleep routines, how often you shower, how often you move your body, right? Those are little things that you can focus on what you can control. A, acknowledge your thoughts and feelings, really big, right? So just really noticing, especially what we spoke about in our last segment, Noticing and being okay with the emotions that are challenging, grief, frustration, anxiety, sadness, sometimes hopelessness, knowing that they're there, maybe journaling that they're there, acknowledging, validating, and then almost putting a bookend so that you can shift to your next emotion. C, coming back into your body. So busy moms, busy parents, often the schedule is you are running around everywhere, forgetting that your coffee is on the counter and cold, trying to feed everybody around you, get the mitts on, right? That oftentimes, it's sometimes you can feel like you're watching yourself from above and that you're a crazy fly running around the house. It's important to have even a minute of the day where you put your hand on your chest. This is what I do with a lot of my children. Hand on the chest, hand on the belly. You breathe in. Oh, that's Blow good. It. Doesn't that feel nice? That's really good. It's a quick way that you can remind yourself, oh, I'm here too. I need to slow down too. And just connecting to your body in a quick, simple way engage in what you're doing. That's the E. Often hard when we're feeling distressed, anxious, overwhelmed. So the way that I like to engage in what I'm doing is when you're making dinner, focus on the chopping, right? Just focus on chopping the carrot slowly. Focus on spreading the jam on your child's piece of toast. Keep it slow, right? And by slow, I mean six seconds. As opposed to running, running, running and the water's boiling, it just allows you to engage in that moment, slow your thoughts down and take a breath. Breathing is big. C in face COVID is committed action. It sounds really big, right? Committed action. But in this, you know, almost a year into this experience, committed action is just being present in what you're doing in the moment. As simple as when you're brushing your teeth, focus on it, right? When you walk with a little bit of vigor and then slow down. You can walk by looking at the trees, by noticing the air. That's commitment just to what you're doing, keeping it simple. Oh, and face COVID, opening up. It's really important. It's important to share, to express, to feel the connection with someone and something somewhere during this time. You don't time. have to be a hero. You don't have to be a hero. And acknowledging that every other parent is feeling the exact same way as you, which is overwhelmed and this is not fair. And connecting with another person even if it's virtually, allows the mirror neurons in your brain that have been lost because you've been alone with your baby or your partner. And sometimes we forget that other people outside of the house are feeling exactly what you are. And it can allow your shoulders to go from up here, just down here, at least for a minute. 
V, values. That's the V in face COVID. So it's important, you know, through this period for us also maybe to acknowledge sometimes, not always, that this time has been a valuable one that we've been around our family for an overwhelming period of time, but that there are some small things that we can be grateful for. And that's what the value piece is about. And oftentimes when I'm finding my clients are overwhelmed and maybe really stuck in that negative place, understandably, it's important to come back to basic gratitude and values. And what I do is I ask them to write in their phone, on a post-it note, speak with their partner, ask their children, what are three things that happened in the day that you were grateful for? What are three things that you're looking forward to when this is over? It helps remind you and ground you. That's to your great. Life. That's really great. Very simple. Great for children before bedtime if you feel like they can't fall asleep. I, in face COVID, is identify resources. Reach out to other people to connect about your emotions. But resources also include online workout videos, podcasts for when you're going for a walk with your baby, it makes you feel sort of like you're not alone and you're learning, you're engaging your adult brain in a way that maybe you don't do the rest of the day, right? Watching a new cooking show, reading a book or an audio book, if there's just a little bit of energy that you have, there are so many virtual resources out there. It's interesting to explore them. Sure. And D, which is the obvious face COVID, D is disinfect and distance, right? We sort of know this. <laughs> we know this. We understand this. You know, at this point in time, I know it's important. I'm not focusing so much on it. It's really focusing on how we and our inner self and our emotions can feel better. And if that for some people is remaining distant, that's okay. Good. Thank you. Well, I think that that's, those are some really great tips that you touched on. So thank you for, for opening up with that. Um, we did have moms who have sent us in some questions uh, over the last week or so, uh, which again, I want to remind everybody that this is an ongoing series with Ask Emma. So you can always send us your email, yes, or questions, info at moviesformommies.com, and uh, we'll get to ask them to Emma. So Emma, this is a question from Karen in Oakville, who has some questions about screen time and balancing her parenting between two kids. So she says, I have a seven month old and a three year old. My partner works from home, but is in the office all day. My baby requires a lot of attention and I'm finding my three year old is having way too much screen time. When I try and engage him in activities he can do on his own, like Play-Doh or building toys, he does it for a few minutes and goes back to the screen. Any suggestions on how I can regulate the screen time better? Excellent question and one that I'm hearing every day across the board, is how do we manage the screen time? What is the damage it's doing to my child? I'm exhausted, what can I do? It's a good question. So this is sort of what I, I advise the families that I work with, which is we're all sort of doing the best we can, but in an ideal situation, best case scenario, the parents are modeling the screen time for the children, right? Great point. So there's nothing wrong with having a family-wide 30 minutes at a certain point in the day where they know that mommy's on the screen, daddy's on his screen working, or other mommy's on his screen working, or any parent is on the screen working, and the child gets their screen time as well. But what needs to be followed through with that is that when that screen time is over, as much as the child is not supposed to be playing on the iPad, neither should the parent, right? So doing their Which very best. Hard. It's, it's hard for everybody. Double hard, double hard. Anything with regards to screens at this point in time, I should to do what you have to do in the moment. And nothing that is going on in this period of time is going to lead to long-term severe mental health deterioration because what we know is that with the right resources, the right love and support, the right connection with the child, anything that's gone on in this past year, we can fix, we can work with, it will be okay. And that sometimes the children are gonna get a lot of screen time. And as a result of that screen time, you may have more tantrums, you may have trouble sleeping, but it will be okay. So parents modeling, how they engage with the screens. And sometimes what's helpful is putting a bit of a calendar or a schedule on the fridge, right? That's with right. outlined, highlighted sort pictures. of pictures. So, you know, if they're too young to read, they can see it chunked that way. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. And knowing so that the child can also expect when the screen time is okay and, and appropriate, allowing them to actually engage in some self-directed play, which is great. Right. And then after that period of time, maybe having the books, the toys, the puzzles, the balls, anything available to them that hopefully a parent can engage in a little bit with them so right. that they learn, right? We're chunking the screen time in certain periods of time, but also keeping in mind, we all have to do what we have to do at this point. We have to get through. We exactly. Have. And, you know, there's something I used to do with my boys when they were very rambunctious and much, much younger, sort of toddler age, is I, we used to create um, rest hour. And it was really, it was a time that almost everybody would go to their room or go to their space. And it was a quiet time. So it could be flipping through a book. It could be coloring. It could be playing with Pokemon cards or whatever. And it also fo 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 focused us as adults to be able to take that, whether it's 20 minutes or a half hour. And it, again, as you said, it models the behavior, like you can be on your own and keep yourself busy. So that might be something else to consider too. Fantastic. There's also some really great resources that keep coming out about family media plans. So it's basically, and even if your children are very young, there's nothing wrong with having a conversation at the dinner table about, you know, when you're on your screens, how does it make you feel? right? When the screens go away, how does it make you right. feel? It actually encourages some emotional intelligence with the child at a very young age to sort of get them to pay attention to, is this game good for me? Is it not good for me? Is there something I could even be doing on the screen with mom and dad that would be better and more fun? Or could there be something else? It engages some critical thinking, which is never a bad thing. That's wonderful. That's great. Great, great tip. Thank you very much, Emma. Okay, so we have one more question from Cynthia in Edmonton. Uh, she's, she says it's sleepless in January. Uh, Cynthia writes, I'm trying to eat right and at least get out for fresh air with my baby every day. He actually sleeps through the night, but I can't, I can't seem to stay asleep. I toss and turn all night and I wake up exhausted. Because I'm so tired, I find I'm extra irritable during the day. I can't seem to break the cycle. Any suggestions for better sleep? Great question. And it's one that I'm hearing all of the time that even, I mean, not only are sometimes our kids not sleeping, but we're not sleeping either. We have a lot of stress and a lot of things racing in our heads. And exactly to your point, Robin, part of why a lot of us are so distressed and hyper even at night is the days are so chaotic and so hectic that a lot of the times at the end of the day when we're still, this is still running all the things that we didn't do, the list that we didn't get to, the interactions we had with kids that we didn't love, right? They're spinning and they're racing for us. So I'm going to say, I mean, first and foremost, we do know that as much as it's so easy to fall into an Instagram hole, it's the worst possible thing we can be Don't doing. Do it. Don't do it. So what we can be doing instead right, is allowing ourselves to have some of that stillness time before we go to bed. It's not for sleep, right? It's for, imagine this, let's say you start making a sauce, right? And you build the sauce, you cook the sauce, then you need to bring the sauce to a boil. Then you sort of turn the sauce to a simmer before it's ready. That's we essentially need to do that for ourselves before we sleep. We can't be boiling, 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 boiling. And, and that's it us to be ready, right? Yeah. So during that sort of simmer time, it's a great opportunity for us to, you know, if you feel like you need to write down a list for the next day, that's simmer time, that's organization. If you feel like that's your time where you need to take off your chip nail polish and just pay attention to your nails, that's your simmer time. If you have a book beside your bed that you've been staring at, read a paragraph. That's it, right? It's time for us to just dial down the speed of our day, whether it's arranging the toys and sitting downstairs on the couch for five exhaling. minutes. Exhaling. Exhaling, doing the breathing that we did at the beginning, or even just lying back and closing your eyes and imagining, this is a very helpful tip. You close your eyes and you lay back and you imagine breathing in one color 
and exhaling another color. It's an interesting right. strategy that actually gets you to focus, streamline your thoughts on breathing in something calm, whatever color that is, and breathing out whatever chaos, red, black, whatever sort of was involved in your space and allowing it out and then trying to go to bed, right? That's a so great tip. It's almost like we are wringing the towel out and then allowing it to dry before bed. Does that make sense? That does make sense. That's it. That's, those are some great tips. Great tips. Thank you, Emma. Well, you know what? We're going to uh, wrap up for today, but thank you so much, Emma Fogel from Emma Fogel Social Work. And uh, we're going to see you in another few days or weeks um, with more on Ask Emma. If anyone has questions they'd like to submit for Emma to answer, info at moviesformommies.com. And we'll make sure that we get Emma to answer your questions. Thank, thank you, you, Emma. Thank you for having me. We'll see you soon. See you Bye -bye. soon.